everyone. It's Pat here from Scrivener Art and Design coming to you from Parksville, British Columbia on Vancouver Island. I am going to show you a video today that I recorded while painting one of the paintings for my recent solo show. It's called In the Limelight. It's a large painting and I hope that you enjoy seeing how it progresses. It's done intuitively. I didn't have a photo reference to uh, look at or anything. It's totally coming out from within. A much harder way to paint, but very rewarding for me. So I hope that you enjoy it. And I also want to say that I am getting really close to 10,000 subscribers and I'm going to do something special uh, for that milestone. So I will leave a link in the video uh, box below where you can sign up to be included. Uh, this is going to be an event, uh, a painting party of sorts. And if you would like to be invited, uh, please sign up. I will leave the link in the comment, um, in the description box below the video. So thanks again for joining and let's get on to the show. I'm starting to block in this painting on the messy background. I did make a video of this um, background. I'll link that below in the description so that you can watch how I created it. So I basically started with a bunch of uh, paint that just had small quantities in a tube that I wanted to use up. Not necessarily um, my color palette at all, but I then intuitively created a drawing on it of a jazz band and I'm blocking it in. Here I'm using a wide four inch Liquitex brush and I'm staying with um, transparent paints. So I'm using magenta, quinacridone magenta, and some uh, thalo turquoise here. So I want to stay transparent as long as I possibly can so I don't lose a lot of this background. So that's the beauty of transparency is that you can see your work in the under layers. Blocking in the lady and now this other person. Sometimes I don't know if it's going to be male or female until I get further along, uh, unless of course it has a, a dress on, but in this case, um, it's more like a jacket on the top. So adding some um, dioxazine purple here. Now this color isn't as transparent, of course. So I'm just going around quickly, just getting the, the block in stage done. Here I've mixed up some lime green. This is a color I mixed out of a yellow and a blue. And again, trying to keep that underpainting for now because I'm really enjoying the pattern of this painting. There is no photo reference for this to show you uh, where I'm going, so you'll just have to watch along to see how it develops. I use chalkboard chalk to sketch out my imagery on my painting, and this canvas is 36 by 36 inches. Remember to stand back from your painting often and take a good look because it's hard to 
see where you're going if you're too close to your painting. Also try and hold your paintbrush back further along the handle. This will help you keep loose. Painting standing up is another great way of getting a little bit more uh, loose brush strokes, not getting so tight with your work. So you get a lot more fluid painting this way. If you are interested in learning how to loosen up more in your paintings, I do have a PDF download. I will leave the link in the description below. It's seven tips on how to loosen up your paintings. It's a good little reminder to have hanging up in your studio until these become part of your DNA, basically from practice. You'll just get in a habit of doing some of these things on automatic pilot. So now you can see that the figures are coming to life. I'm using here a violet oxide color. It's not a color I use often. Uh, so this is definitely pushing towards a different kind of palette for me, but I have a large tub of this violet oxide. And now I've switched to the uh, purple, um, dioxazine purple shade. So I use that in the piano below, and you may not be able to tell that is a piano yet, um, but I'm putting in the white part for the keyboard, and this is a technique of flattening. Uh, so the piano is on a very flat, looking down perspective, rather than uh, three-dimensional. So I'm using a paper towel just to kind of rub this in. I don't want it too heavy. Again, I'm trying to keep the underpainting. So still using the paper towel. Adding some highlights to the faces so that you can easily see them. So I tend to use the paint that's left on my brush rather than cleaning it by adding it in different areas of the painting. And I'm just trying to soften that down. Thalo is a very uh, heavy tinting color and it's very strong. Coming back in with chalk just to solidify the shapes a little better. Painting intuitively uh, is a lot more challenging than having a picture because you're kind of making it up as you go along. And there can be lots of changes that take place because things don't work out. So it may not come together as quickly as using a photo reference, but from my way of thinking, I think it creates a lot more interesting and original composition. I'm not worried about copying a picture. I can just tap into my memory, my intuition, and I didn't like that green shade there at all. So now I've got white mixed in and I try not to add the white until later on in the painting the difference between the transparent and the translucent or opaque colors is that the transparent colors allow the light to go through the painting, through your layers and bounce back. So you get a really luminous painting by doing this. Once you start adding white that has a lot of chalk in it, your colors aren't going to be as um, luminous. The, the light doesn't bounce back the same. So having a combination of both things happening can give you a really nice effect in your work. 
And if you want to leave some of the understory, uh, this works very well. Now I'm using a lot of fluid paints in this case. And fluid paints go on a little thinner. You don't end up with heavy brush strokes of paint. And again, I'm using that wide, I think it's about three or four inch Liquitex brush. I'll put a link to that um, in the description below as well. It's a brush I use a lot and I really enjoy it. Now I'm just getting into some of these tighter places with a smaller brush. And this is a Crayola Kids brush I'm using and I find them really great. They don't fall apart easily. Uh, the bristles don't fall out and they're inexpensive. So it's a one inch flat. It comes in a package of four with various sizes from the one inch down, but I do use a one inch mostly. So just starting to work in some details here and there and define the arm a little bit more using that color that's on my brush in some other places. giving this guy a little tam. So the only way to really correct mistakes uh, after you've made one is using opaque paint. So you saw me rubbing something off there that I really wasn't that keen on. So if you get at it quickly, you can rub something off Again, using my paint on my brush, bringing it around to a different area. This is the Thalo Turquoise. Now you might be starting to see that this is a singer. I didn't like um, it as a cord, putting it in more as a stationary stand. Using my finger here to blend. So with acrylics, you can add a blending medium if you don't paint fast and you, you want to be able to blend. That is very helpful. It will keep your paints wet a little longer. You could also try open acrylics for something that is going to stay wet longer for you. So I'm trying to save some of those shapes in the background. And I'm just going back in with chalk here, making an adjustment tightening up some of my shapes by negative painting. So negative painting is painting around your subjects rather than painting your subjects. This can give you a lot more control um, regarding getting things right, I find, because you're not thinking about trying to paint the head or trying to paint the musical instrument, whatever you're painting but the space around it, and you kind of get out of your own way. So a great um, way to learn more about this is picking up a copy of Betty Edwards' book uh, called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. That has some nice information in it, and there's lots of artists that are painting in a negative um, way where that they go around the objects. So I really do encourage you to give that method a try rather than painting the actual shape or in this case, person. I do believe it gives you uh, better results making your corrections.
I am pondering here, and I do think maybe I wiped that off. But I'm coming in now with um, a more skin tone color, not perhaps true skin tone, but something that works with my painting. And I'm blocking in some hand shapes. Putting a little bit of that color onto the face, onto the neck. So faces are something I go back and forth on through the painting several times. You want to use several colors on your face, not just paint them in once so they're flat. And normally if the person is looking towards you, you want to see a neck. So you can carve in a neck with negative painting or you could also change the... Um, neckline of the garment to indicate a neck. Make sure that your shading on your faces and hands is all on the same side as if there was a light source. So this is a little bit brighter pink than it would be for actual skin tone, but again it's something that works with my painting. So I am not doing um, realistic portraits here. I'm more interested in shapes and the harmony of the colors of the painting opposed to accuracy of what a skin tone would be like. So just blocking in some hand shapes. Going back in, adding some color to these. So it's a continuous uh, going back and forth, working on the whole painting until I get really down to the details where I might start honing in a little bit more on finalizing my details. So I've decided to leave this figure here uh, with dark skin. So adding a little bit of that same color somewhere else. A little bit of painting over the hand there, giving it a little bit more shading. Just kind of pushing that area back under the bench, making it a little bit more neutral. If you stay to the end of the video, I'm going to show you uh, this painting in some room situations. And I've just, uh, it was one from my uh, solo show I did recently. and. It's now been shipped off to a gallery. So if you are in the Calgary area, you can see this painting over at a Webster Gallery in Calgary and see it for yourself up close and personal. It's always much different than seeing it on screen or in a photograph. You really be able to see the depth of the painting uh, with the multiple layers going on in it. This is a color shaper brush by Liquitex. And uh, again, it's, it's wide and gives you the opportunity to put paint on in a different way. So by changing your tools, you're going to create some different marks and interest. 
So don't get stuck on necessarily staying with one brush and making sure that you use a bigger brush than you think is necessary. So I want this fellow to stand out more and there's not much contrast between the background and the face. So I am coming in here and lightening it up. So he'll pop out a little more. Just toning that color a little bit so it's not quite so flat. So don't think that once you paint your background in, it's kind of once and done. Uh, you can modify your background several times to make it work. So I'm just kind of scratching back into that to bring a little bit of energy and marks back into the background. Now I am still trying to save these little um, marks I made, this pattern. So just loosely covering over that and now I'm coming back in on his hat. It seemed just a little bit on the strong side. Putting some of that color down on his arm. So again, you'll see this painting go through many um, iterations as I move it forward. So I've added some cobalt teal, or I think it's just teal actually from Golden, just to identify his arm more. And I'm adding a little bit of it in some other places. A little bit of highlight. Coming in with some thalo turquoise here. Trying to blend that a little bit. Again, more of the teal color. So the teal is very opaque. I'm just going back into the upright base. Adding some more depth of color. Bringing my scraper in to move this around a little bit. So this painting was created over several days of coming back to it. Adding a little bit of brightness into his jacket. And a little bit of shading. So using that same color going around in different places trying to stay really loose with my brush, holding it on the edge.
deciding to let go of that background altogether. It's really too dark. So I want to also thank everyone who has made a donation uh, to my Buy Me a Coffee account. I really appreciate it. I was able to buy a bunch of new canvases uh, with your donations, so that will really help me to be able to do more paintings and share them with you. Just now really getting down to the finessing of this. Um, this painting uh, is titled In the Limelight. And uh, the name kind of came about because of all of the lime green. So it's a little bit of play on words with uh, these musicians being in the limelight. I think it's very appropriate. It's a big balance between trying to keep the underpainting and make the painting work. So here you see me bringing some of that green over on this side. So calming this color down a little bit now. Having mixed in a little bit of blue to it. Changing the color again. <laughs> I didn't really like how that was sitting. So coming back in with some gold, but touches of that green will still be in the painting. So don't be afraid to change your mind. We don't always get it right the first time, but you have to try to see if something is going to work or not. With acrylic paint in particular, things are very easy to change. Uh, you just wanna make sure that you allow it to dry so that you don't end up making mud, but certainly uh, it dries quickly and you can carry on. You can also use a blow dryer. I prefer that over a heat gun. I know some people use a heat gun, but you wanna be very careful uh, with a heat gun because you're not actually blowing any air on the surface. So what happens when you use any kind of heat implement on an acrylic painting is that you are drying the top surface layer and the under part is still very uh, wet. So it can cause problems with it drying properly. So I'm really leery about a heat gun. Um, it can also cause the paint to bubble and stuff or even uh, craze. So I prefer to just take the longer route and use the hair dryer if I need to speed up the drying. Just putting a big fan on it too can speed it up if you have a fan in your studio. 
taking down this uh, line over here, the contrast was too high. Adding a little bit of greens in amongst it. Coming back in with this circle sponge. Putting a little more shading here on the face. I'm taking a brave kind of move here with this little roller, uh, which is from the children's department. And I've got some of that oxide um, red on it, just to break that green up. And here you see me adding some stencil mark. Now I already have the stencil in, but I'm adding more back in. And now I'm going to go ahead and start putting these uh, black keys on the piano. I have sketched them on with a pen. So this is one instance where I am actually using black in the painting. I should have possibly put the hand on after I put these keys in rather than uh, going around the hand, but in any event, I may have to fix the hand up some. I like how some of the pattern is left in the keyboard. So this is one instance where I've got an, a smaller brush. Again, it's a flat brush. It's out of the Crayola series. And uh, it works well to have a flat brush to make a straighter line, I find. Just coming back in with some white paint cleaning some of this up a little bit. I also want to let you know that I do have a Facebook 
creative community uh, if you want to come over and join. It's a great place to share your work, get feedback, ask any questions you might have. So this is a dioxazine purple, the same color as in the piano. Now I've decided to change the color of his top here. I want to bring emphasis to him uh, as my focus. Even though he's kind of on the edge of the painting, I feel like he is my focal point because he's forward in the painting and because of the keyboard. So I wanted to link that together and then also add the white over on the strings so that you're getting some of that throughout the painting. So now just going back in, adding a little collar on this one at the top. Again, just bringing that white paint across so that it's in a few places. So basically putting highlights here and there, bringing some attention to different parts of the painting. If you enjoyed watching this, please leave a comment, question, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.